Welcome to the Pike County Report. I'm Brandon Roberts. With me, as always, is Pike County Judge Executive Wayne T. Rutherford, and joining us today is County Attorney Howard Keith Hall. And uh, Judge, let's start with you. Uh, we found a 13-page job description in the bulletin about the duties of the County Attorney, but um, your dealings with the County Attorney. What let, me, let me say this: it, it, the Kentucky Constitution of 1850. Uh, set out that, the, that each county in the Commonwealth would have a county attorney. Uh, I've been blessed uh, since all the years that I've been in office in this county uh, to, to have county attorneys that, that is a partner in operating county government. And they, uh, they have numerous duties and, and uh, people of this county really don't understand the important role that uh, Hard Keith Hall, Pike County Attorney, plays and his staff. The progress that we've made in this county uh, in in the last few years, we could not have made it without the legal advice of the county attorney's office. And uh, so that's that's some of the things we want to discuss. But this this office, if you're safe in your community, Brandon in Belfry or Pikeville or Elkhorn City or Virgie or wherever. Uh, we got to depend on Herod Keith Hall Thank and you. the prosecutor and under the Kentucky Revised Statute and the, the prosecutorial duties that, that they have under this statute. And they, uh, they, they prosecute all violations of the penal laws that we have in this Commonwealth. And, uh, the, and his, the, the duties of the county attorney is vast. I mean, heck, I'm on the boards and commissions, <laughs> Mr. County Attorney, and all the time that we start talking about something, they'll say, we have to get a hold of the county attorney and he has to give us guidance on this. Well, I know that you, you, don't, you prefer not to attend any meeting without the presence of the county attorney. Ever since I was first elected many years ago in this county and served this county, I don't make any decision that would put the county in a position where that we would violate the Kentucky statutes and or pay somebody that shouldn't be paid or sign a contract. Every, every dealing, contract or otherwise, that my office deals with, it is not signed by the county judge executive un unless it's authorized by the court where the county attorney is present and has helped draw up the resolution or the ordinance and that it's not initialed by the county attorney. That, that makes sure as we, as we work to, to pro progress in this county that it's done under the, uh, under, but, but uh, Mr. County Attorney, back in the 70s, I had the court system. I was a judge of the, what's now known as the district court. You left about the time I started driving. What you? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I always when, when somebody, I say left, I don't mean left. I mean left as far as the judicial aspects judicial, of, the that, executive, of, the, of that, the judge executive's correct. office. And, uh, and and so I, I understand that the many many duties, juvenile court is one, and we'll get into that. The county attorney is going to going to going to give us a litany of things that his office does, and uh, we uh, we certainly. And being the legal advisor to the county is an awesome responsibility. Uh, we, uh, we this last year, and of course we, we had two floods and trying to, to rehabilitate and catch up, we, we handled a vast amount of money, millions and millions of dollars, probably around $50 million or more, but the county budget was probably 37 or somewhere in that range. But we was able, and, and, I, and I looked at the audit we got, uh, Brandon, this year from the state auditor, and where they, they didn't find anything at all in county government. We, uh, I kidded uh, uh, Frankie Stacy, as you know, Frankie's CPA, and he handled the FEMA, which was one, one aspect that they audited was $8 million, and Mr. County Attorney, he made a mistake of uh, Twenty-five dollars and eighty. Twenty-five dollar overcharge. Oh, overcharge million. of all of eight million dollars. And I said, Franklin, I thought you were perfect. You know, <laughs> but but this is because of the of the attention and the legal advice that the county attorney's office gives us. Uh, 
but I know you, your your duties are varied. You, you, your office people don't realize that you're down the hall from my office, of right. your prosecutor's office. Of how many people uh, know that we was trying to get downstairs, and people just stop you on the elevator and headed to your office. Uh, and then, you know, of course, I know you stop for them, and I stop for them. That's when I'm at Lowe's, I grab one of those guys and pull them from their job. Where I'm at a store, I grab people where they, when if they got a uniform on, then I call that the uniform. If there's a tie on around the courthouse, <laughs> you, you, need, to you. Well, you need to stop and tell them where the, you need to stop and tell people where the bacon is. That's yeah, exactly hey, right. Guy, we got to stop. Hey, uh, Howard Keith, could you touch a little bit about your role as the county legal advisor? Let me tell you one thing quickly is it's those of you uh, that don't know much about me or my office, that means two things. One, I've been doing my, what I'm supposed to be doing and keeping a low profile, not expressing political opinions and being an attorney for the fiscal court also means that that person's probably been doing what they're supposed to be doing and they've not had encounters with the court system. Uh, our office primarily is part state, part county, part federal. Uh, the state part is we are the prosecutors for the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Uh, I've always joked that my office respects all three because we honor all three holidays, whether it be county, state, or federal, we honor all the holidays. That's a joking with my office. I told them that they like to honor them all. But some of my office does child support, and that's because of a federal program or grant. That's quite an extensive thing because a lot of people think that's just welfare, but all child support cases. We have some gentlemen that make 100000 Believe it or not, we've, we have everything from people that uh, are SSI recipients or very low income, and you have, you have to work very carefully with those because... Every dollar is important as well. And we have some people that are millionaires actually paying child support through our office, and, and it's part of our federal duties to uh, administer those programs. So we help mo a bulk of the people that are owed child support now. And I want to say one good thing. A lot of men come to my office and say, Keith, I'm not a deadbeat dad. I want to say something quickly about child support. We collected $5 million in child support. We collected around $5 million plus or minus a few dollars a year. That doesn't, I, I don't pay that $5 million. Most of it comes from good, hard-working dads that love their children. That does not come from people that were, we can't squeeze that much money out of people that don't want to pay it. So a lot of the guys joke around with me, and I found something. Most of the guys that joke about having to pay child support are just like those of us that have children in their home. We complain a little bit about having to pay for this or pay for that. And the truth is they're bragging. People are proud of the fact that they pay for their children, whether it be through the court system, court order, whether or not they pay it directly at home. Uh, so most of the guys that... Uh, that do that. That's our child support division. That's federal funded. We also represent the state by prosecuting misdemeanors and felonies up to the indictment. Don't, I want to point out one thing. We have a great Commonwealth attorney, but he's busy with the bad apples, the murders, the rapists, the bank robbers, drug dealers. He gets some people that aren't that bad that stepped across the line maybe in some type of white collar offense or something. So he gets some people, I don't want to say everybody that's been prosecuted by Rick Bartley's bad people, but he does get the more important cases. For those people that don't know, a felony is a case in Kentucky that carries more than one year or more in jail. Those are Rick Bartley's cases. Obviously, that's not the bulk of cases. I get everything from minor traffic violations to, to uh, anything that would carry up to a year in jail, assaults, domestic violence, and so forth. And uh, one ticket we don't get, you know what it is. You guys know what tickets we don't prosecute. And they're the ones that people in town get madder than anything over, even though it's 10 to 20 to $50. What is it? Parking? Parking. <laughs> I don't have anything to do with the parking, guys. <laughs> so uh, people are okay paying $500 fines, $1,000 fines. They're okay with that. But now a $10 parking ticket, $20 parking ticket can cause some real anger, especially when you're down here to do business in the town. Uh, but those, the reason for those is, and I, I want to defend our city, is so that if you do have something that you need to get downtown for and get back out, you can find a parking place. I parked up the theater today. I don't have a parking place for one reason. People get mad when they see it empty, even if I'm working in another county. And then people get mad when they see you in it, when they walk from the theater. So I've never taken a parking pa thing, even though that they've been offered. And I'm not going to say my assistants don't like them, because they like, they like the parking place. Uh, but anyway, that's generally what we do. We also advise the fiscal court, as uh, Mr. Rutherford's pointed. That's a very important role. It's so important that we have one employee specifically designated, and you may see Mr. Roland Case, and I, I know the show is going to uh, address him as well, and he uh, works works daily with you. I, and I hate to admit, our county is big enough that we have to delegate. I have four or five assistant county attorneys, part-time and full-time. We're big enough that you have to delegate, but we're small enough that people want to see their county attorney around the courthouse. So I try to do both, try to delegate and also be here. 
You also, the Attorney General appoints you as a special prosecutor. Went to Boyd County Kentucky. yesterday to do a DUI case, and, and occasionally one of my family members might get in trouble or might have an issue or might even be a victim of a crime. And, and you obviously, that, that I would either feel uncomfortable or there is some type of ethical rule that would keep me from being, handling the case. And in that case, we do send to one of our adjoining counties or some other county and the Attorney General actually appoints that person uh, to come up. We do that on our own county's expense, but in turn, that county spends their own money. We don't ask them to reimburse us when I go down to Boyd County. Of course, that's pretty minimal expense anyway. Because uh, if they pay for it, I'd go down there and stay all night for a couple of nights to try a case down about Ashland. But uh, we get down there and get back, and we went down yesterday to prosecute a driving under the influence charge uh, down in Boyd County yesterday. Now, what other uh, agencies does your office represent? Quasi-governmental? We prosecute all misdemeanors, which is fish and game violations. I think we do somewhat with the uh, other boards that you appoint. Uh, the tourism board, which is pretty active. Uh, I know we've had some issues recently with county and city, and I think uh, you want to know how great this county is? There was a debate whether or not the county should have tourism or the city should have tourism. The way we just compromised it, let's just have two. <laughs> let's just go ahead and have a lot of tourism. I like the way we do things in the city, county here, and I heard the, and I watch the city government here on the TV, on, and I love this Channel 99. Uh, it gives people an opportunity. Now, I got to brag on the, on the, on the TV. This is not a uh, commercial promotion of them, but. I flip on 99 now. It's sort of like what they call it on computers when it default with your uh, home page. Mm -hmm. 99 is my home page now on my TV. That's where I go to first before I decide what I'm going to do, what I'm going to watch that night. Let's talk about Roland Case. I know I've, I've already had, here, here we are today, uh, I don't know what time, about 10 something. I've already met with him twice this morning. I've Roland, already met with you once. So Roland Case is so a genius. We, as I said, county government could not operate Brandon and run if it wasn't for the county attorney's office and the, the advice that, that they give us. It's Rolling case, like a lot of your employees, and you mentioned the people that count the money, a lot of these people are, and I, and I don't want to even mention the word because you don't want to mention on these shows, but I'm going to use a word in a negative. He is non-political. Uh, just like your several of the office, some of your people in your staff have been there yeah. through multiple administrations. That they've got the Pike County in mind. and. Uh, Roland is one of those guys that I get a call every now and then. They'll say, he's siding with this magistrate. He's siding with the county judge. He's not listening to me. He's, he's got his own agenda. Truth is, he's got, he's, he goes and looks it up and reads it. We love the way he operates. He's, he's, he's a legalist, and he will he, uh, upset everybody occasionally because he goes. No, he, he keeps he, us out of trouble. <laughs> a pessimist in that position he can keeps be. us out of trouble. He's not. Yeah, and he's, we're he not, we got enough things to do to develop this county than to have I'm legal make, problems. I'm going to try to make you feel good when I talk to you. Roland's going to try to. He, he does, quit. Sometimes he, yeah, he Roland sometimes case, he the negative. Rolling so. questions everywhere. Rolling, right. And he should, and that's, that's right. and that's great. He's uh, been great for us. I've had. He's worked with uh I guess you're the third county judge he's worked with directly, and uh, all uh, and then uh, giving us some consistency through different administrations. Correct. Yeah. Well, it, it, it does a great job. Uh, uh, I appreciate Roland that. Does. I appreciate and, you all speaking. And uh, uh, and I'm sure your people over at, across the street and the, in that office over there, I'm sure that that uh, you, you have a great staff over there. Uh, yeah, and we have people from. Uh, uh, and again, uh, I don't want to ever talk politics. I'll talk the reverse of it. We have people from uh, uh, two of my assistants one day asked me, one of them come to me, and he said, uh, do you care if I go to the Lincoln Day dinner? I don't know. That must be a... That's the Republican... Uh, okay, I didn't... Thing. must be associated with the political party. <laughs> and uh, anyway, I said, uh, yeah, you can go if you'll do me one favor. I said, what's that? I said, tell him I sent you down there. So <laughs> we have people from both parties uh, in my office. Uh, my chief assistant is uh, from the minority party of the county. I won't mention which one that is. But I'm very proud of the fact, one thing I want to point out, too, in our office, when I say, and is the, uh, and I speak of diversity of my office, I've been in office about, oh, what, 15, 16, I think I'm, uh, 15, 16 years I've actually held this office as the elected county attorney and then Gary Johnson had it 20 before that and there was a litany of others before that that are still practicing. Herbie Deskins, Joe Justice, uh, uh, well, John Paul Runyon for a time. John He's Paul still, Runyon. Judge and I just talked about the attorney yesterday. Jay Runyon. They used to either got thrown out or burned out. I think you didn't have as many assistants then is what I hear. They had more. Didn't have any. <laughs> that, that's when, when you, you burn out pretty quick. But the uh, that's been a luxury that my office has had. 
there has been 15, and I had a list of their names one time, ladies. When I first got out of law school in 88, uh, women were starting to make entry into the legal field. They've always been there. But if you look back on uh, law school graduations in the early, it'd be just almost look like at a medical school. It'd be one. It'd be the token one lady if you go back, you know, early 1900s. 1988, it was starting to change when I got out of law school. And, in fact, we've had 15 women work in my office either as summer, you know, through college sure. as intern or actually as an assistant county attorney, and that we counted 15 in 15 years. I think that's remarkable that are now attorneys practicing, practicing everywhere from Virginia Beach to Lexington in the Attorney General's office. And those ladies are from every school district in Pike County. So uh, we're proud of that. Elkhorn, Shelby Valley Virgie, Dorton, Millard, the Childers, the lady named Childers from there, Feds Creek, uh, Phelps, uh, the Stacy, young girl I believe her name Stacy, worked over it was Chris Harris over in. She worked in our office. She's from Belfry, uh, Johns Creek. Uh, one's, in a, one's a prosecutor now in uh, Northern Kentucky. The young lady from a uh, couple from Mullins. One of them went on to work for the federal government. One of the girls that graduated there, one of the lady, ladies that graduated. I call them girls. We're getting older. Uh, <laughs> these are professional women, I guess I should say. Uh, are now ones in Northern Kentucky working in a prosecutor's office. Uh, that's uh, uh, Randy and Judy Looney's daughter down there from Mullins. And uh, also the uh, uh, Christy Love went with the federal government. So we're very proud of uh, not only the work we've done, but the, the, people, we, the people we've produced. Uh, we're very proud sure. of Sure. And the, when Herbie Deskins kind of turned in, he got the first assistance with Thurman Hibbets. I remember second, Thurman. Second one was. Pam Todd. Uh huh. Pam's Robin still an attorney Lange. here, professional. Yes, uh, she was. A, the, she was the prosecutor. And, I and, and had not realized she worked in the office. I did. She came here out of law school with Herbie Deskins. And, mm -hmm. and uh, that's right. She's originally from down in Western Kentucky. That's right. Correct. And and loves this area, and, and has stayed. But uh, well, you, I, you know, I don't want to leave anybody out here. But we see a lot of Eddie Green and a lot of Tommy Chamberlain. Yeah, work in the prosecutor division. Yeah. Eddie works, uh, they're, they're both primarily full-time. Eddie's been dabbling a little bit, uh, and, and, the, and the law allows him to do some private work, which I do some private work. Uh, keep your feet wet a little bit, staying out in the world of the private world, what time we get, and then Eddie does a little of that. Tommy Chamberlain just loves being a prosecutor. Uh, Tommy's originally from Kemper area. I believe his family had a grocery store there. Eddie's from the Belfry area. I went to school with Eddie, yeah. Uh, Eddie's from the Belfry area. Was he a pretty good boy? Pretty good guy. Did you know he'd be a prosecutor? No. We were trying a case. We were trying a case one time, and I asked one of the jurors. She said, "I know Tommy Chamberlain there." And I said, "Really?" And I, and I just, you know, you can have fun in misdemeanor cases. You remember Judge trying sure. them because they're they're not they might be important to the guy sitting there, but they're not going to change the world. And uh, I was sitting there, and I said, "Did you know that he would be living with his mother and dad when he's 35 years old?" She said, "Oh yeah." By the way, Tommy has moved out now. He's, he's, he's no longer living in his mother's basement. And he has a girlfriend, so he's doing pretty good. And Eddie, Eddie is a, a great guy, by the way. They're both great guys. Uh, you won't see them out doing anything that would bring any embarrassment to our office at all or to, to the county government. And that's the kind of staff and people we've got. To, those guys aren't as fun sometimes as some of these guys. You have to worry about whether or not they make it into work. <laughs> but they're solid. They are solid and good employees, good people to work with. And I hope they stay with us a lot longer. We're getting a good thing with a lot of attorneys in town and with the industry. Uh, anytime business is down, when you do have good people, they don't want to move on. That's the only good thing about a down economy. <laughs> good people, people stay it's a buyer's market. Yeah, good people want to stay with you a lot longer. There's county attorney uh, building a new judicial building. And oh, yeah. We could not have, uh, if it had not been for your office and uh, the county attorney's office and the city attorney's office, we could have never got along as far as we've got in the construction of this building. That is a, mm. uh, as the old timers will say, a humongous undertaking to build a $33 million uh, building, 98,000 square feet. And we could not have done it without wow. your, we, we could not have done that without the, the help of your office. Yeah, it is, uh, we've, uh, we've had to hold their, it, it's a tough job. I'm chairman of the, of the, of the, the local committee. board, and it's tough to hold their feet to the far and to make sure we're in budget, to make sure we comply. And then we've had to, to 
the, we, the board majority wanted to build this judicial building over on the river field. And the I was state, one of them. And I was <laughs> one of them. And the state had finally told us, said no, we got plenty of counties in the Commonwealth that wants that 33 million and we'll take it to another county, you're building it on Main Street. Mm -hmm. So we had to take and against what the board wanted to do, we wanted to take all of the building, had to take all of the building, the, the old pension the hotel, the, uh, the, one of the oldest buildings in town was the old Caudill Hardware, which was the red building. It's gone. Uh, then we, we made that a green building from the beginning and a lead building. And it's still a lead building, but we had subsurface problems. So we, we have a reservoir of water under the ground in this uh, that particular area of Pogwell. And uh, they tried to pump it out. When they did, the Chris Ratliff, the building the Ratliff family owned, it started tilting over, and we had to buy that one. Uh, your office had been tremendously busy in regard to making sure that we didn't violate any property rights. The board majority didn't want to take the oldest building down, which was a Christmas building on the corner, which is still the only one standing today. And then the family decided that they wanted to sell the property and they came forward. So that everything had been moved, but if it was not for the input that we had from the county attorney's office and the city attorney's office, right. uh, we could not have it. It, it is a as you're aware, it's a very detailed, very technical, very complex. A lot of trust was involved in, in, in several pieces of that property that had to, that had to be sorted through. But uh, we, uh, we now have uh, all the buildings gone, but the one built on the corner and it'll be taken down in the next few days. And, and it's going to be a beautiful judicial building. Uh, and. Uh, it'll, it'll be here for a hundred years. Now, this one that was built by the state and, of course, ended up belonging to the county like this building, uh, the justice building uh, was not big enough and, and not adequate enough for our court system to operate properly in this county. And and those judges, and Judge Coleman, Judge Combs, uh, Judge Friend, and Judge uh, Mullins, and the, and the, the clerk's office. It's not adequate room for our system. And you know, you was district mm -hmm. judge, you know what you had to uh, uh, work in, in those conditions. A lot of problems had uh, been in that building and a lot of money had been spent by the county and the state in regard to that building in the last few years. So uh, I just want to say that if it wasn't for your office, Mr. County Attorney, that uh, and the board certainly appreciates you all and, and the city attorney's office for... I'd for never done, I'd never done, i tell you how, one thing that county attorneys don't do is condemn property very often. Counties don't do a lot of condemning. States do for highways, and occasionally we have to to widen a road or something in the county, but uh, I'd never done a condemnation before. But, that might be why it took so long to get it done, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> Roland, I think Roland learned a lot about Roland condemnation. Learned. And and uh, Reed Anderson, who used to be an assistant county attorney, we all leaned we leaned on Reed Anderson quite a bit because Reed, uh, early in his career, that's what he did, and that fact, in fact, that's where he met his wife, and, and uh, that's where we've he met all learned, We've all learned a well, lot the last year, and this building has been so complex. And, and uh, y'all taking historical buildings from people <laughs> it's, it's a trick. I'd like to I'd like to ask us uh, one out of three people uh, we see on the second floor. Um, one's going to solid waste. One's coming to see the judge. One's going to your office. Mm -hmm. What primarily do they? Does your office on the second floor of the courthouse? Hand? That's a criminal division. Also tax. Uh, Gloria Johns does all of our tax. She's been doing it since I started. Fifteen. She, she's a from the prior administration. Uh, Tawana Coleman's in there. Karen Hart. They're from the prior. They've been there since my administration started. They were in, uh, actually hired by Gary Johnson before I was ever there. And and that longevity you can't replace. I guess the word would be experience. And, uh, but anyway, they are there. Hopefully the people coming into my office are victims of crimes. Also, sometimes people are in because their family member needs a guardian. We also do guardianship proceedings. Uh, we do all juvenile proceedings, uh, whether it be a juvenile offense or a child that... Sometimes, sometimes there's a thin line between a child that be an abused allegation might turn out to be the child itself might have some issues. So a lot of times a child's an offender, but they're also a victim, and vice versa, because you assume that an 11-year-old that wants to hold up a gas station, uh, 
didn't come out of a perfect situation, which there is no such thing as a perfect situation. So generally family court and, and, and with its evolution of family court, uh, you don't have to try to pigeonhole which one you're in, but we still do juvenile offenses over in district court. Uh, sometimes we have to transfer a juvenile to an adult. 10, 20 times a year, but when you do, it's very serious. We have had children commit murders, and you have to know what to do immediately on those. There's a very set set of circumstances, things you have to do when a child commits a very horrific crime. That happens uh, 10 times, five to 10 times a year in our county. You do a lot of EPOs in that office too, don't you? Or, yeah, or that's where the EPOs. The word EPO and DVO is, a, a lot of people use those terms, don't really know what they mean. One's emergency protective order, and the other's the domestic violence order, EPO slash DVO. DVOs after the judge actually orders. Actually, EPO DVOs were designed uh, to give people protection from somebody that's an aggressor without going through the criminal process or as a supplement to the criminal process. So sometimes people don't want their, because think about it for a minute. When you file a criminal charge through my office before 1984, um, before there ever was emergency protective orders or domestic violence orders, before those existed, family members would have to file a criminal charge against their husband or spouse. A lot of people don't want to lock up their spouse. Uh, everybody talks sometimes about the EPO, DVO's been abused, and they might be. Uh, if a man comes home and tells his wife that, hey, uh, we've been together 20 years, I'm leaving, he probably doesn't want to see her, or if she says, I'm leaving you. That's not what an EPO, DVO's for. They're anticipating a blow up which could become physical. So sometimes it's anticipating it, uh, whether you're getting ready to try give somebody some news that might traumatize them. Uh, How many so, criminal cases do you think uh, you try a year? Oh gosh. Traffic DUIs, 1,500 would be the average. That's about what we have mm -hmm. in, in Those days, yeah, they pretty well stay. Well, we there's more enforcement, 14, less, believe it or not, less people, 14. less people probably out driving and drinking, but more enforcement because of the attention, especially after that Carrollton bus crash in uh, 1988, yeah. May of 88. I think that's the day Kentucky went from uh, medium-sized gear to full gear on prosecuting of DUIs and changing laws and so forth. When I first started, or, or before that, Kentucky law said that a person registering a .15 on the breathalyzer, blood alcohol concentration, was uh, not that high. They, in fact, encouraged you to try to negotiate anything under a .15. Now that's .08. So essentially, we've cut in half the amount of alcohol we, we expect people to drive, to drink and drive. But more and more of Eastern Kentucky has become wet. But it still seems like uh, less and more and more people know if they get out and drink alcohol, they're going to run into a police officer and recognize the dangers of that. But more and more road checks, and more and more enforcement, and more and more, more and more uh, uh, encouragement to. And also, you have the uh, judge. Do you remember in the days when this person wrecked a car driving drunk? The officer came up on the scene. That, think about you're going back to your civics. For a minute, misdemeanors, you're not allowed to arrest. A police officer can't unless they see you do it. There's only three circumstances they can do that. Now, do you remember when they changed that? It was changed before I started prosecuting, that they can actually call it a probable cause DUI. Uh -huh. Because nobody wants to wait and go find a judge before you come back and charge them with DUI. Used to they charge them with alcohol intoxication or, or drinking in public, and then came back and tried to amend it later. So the um, DUI laws, there's three areas where, where police officers can arrest you without seeing you. One, shoplifting. That's because uh, that's probably because of I'm just guessing the regular legislatures come back because this was passed years ago. Probably a strong lobby by retailers. Uh, mothers against drunk driving, obviously strong lobby, but DUIs. The third category, as we just discussed, domestic violence. Police officer shows up, lady's right. got a black eye. Uh, Freeburn, Phelps, Belfry, Elkhorn, Dorton, somewhere 30 You're minutes from the courthouse. You get a warrant and go back, or, or yeah. somebody bring them a warrant and had to wait. Yeah, I'm waiting on someone to get out there. So there's three categories, and those are three areas that we prosecute in the district court quite a bit. We're technically the prosecutors on minor traffic offenses. If you get a speeding ticket or a minor traffic offense, and you don't want to mess with the court system, and you want a clean record, you can go now, I see most places, I don't know if we have it or not, on ePay. Go onto the internet. Oh yeah. Ask for traffic school right on the internet, and you can actually go to traffic school if you're an introvert and don't want to come to court, and don't want to go to traffic school, and you're a computer guy, or you find somebody in your family, find one of your kids. <laughs> if you don't want to go to court <laughs> and you don't want to go to traffic school, your children can put you on the internet, register you for traffic school, 
pull your credit card out, pay your court costs, keep your record clean, and attend traffic school on the Internet. Now, Mr. County Attorney, let, so, let me tell you about traffic school. Back when, when we had the court, when the court system was mm -hmm. different, and I was the judge of the, of the quarterly court, we filed for a grant, a pilot grant from the what? federal government. The congressman and senators helped us get it from Washington. And we went, we, the partner on that was East Kentucky University. Dr. Martin was president at that time. And we, we got the pilot program in the United States on to see if traffic school would work. We came up with this concept and we, we, we started the school in Pike County. Wow. It, uh, then we, matter of fact, the Eastern Kentucky University hired a Floyd County, a native of Floyd County, to come back and teach the classes in traffic school. Then the Kentucky legislature was the first state in the United States to pass traffic school back in the 70s. It's a great program. And, it's a, and it, has, uh, it has grown in. and as you, you I've been to it. I've to attended it. it. <laughs> Not voluntarily. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but uh, your office is so important. It's so important that uh, your office, of course, represents that. other county offices. I know that uh, your office, with Mr. Case, they, they are continuously meeting with the county clerk and the other officials and giving Love them to. legal advice. The Election Commission, oh, my goodness. Election Commission, uh, they it's a whole uh, they world won't start a meeting unless you you or one of right. your assistants are sitting there uh, to give them the legal advice. Uh, so the housing authority. Uh, oh yeah, we love working you all with the housing authority. Uh, sure, dude. We I'm got great the, housing authority. I'm on the extension board, and time and time again, that's a process. The next meeting, if you're all somebody's not there, we'll get a legal advice on this, and we'll move forward on it. And 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 the health department. I'm on the health board. And we'll I should have brought a list with all the things you do, do, Judge. You got it. And, and I'm on the, on, on the health board right. and, and the county attorney. We got to have advice on the county attorney to make sure that we're within the confines of the Kentucky Revised Statute. And, uh, and really, this blighted housing program that oh, we came great. up with has been, been a great program. But we couldn't have, we couldn't have done that program if it hadn't been with your office and as it was such a we didn't want to violate anybody's property rights i think we're the only county doing so it we're, well we we didn't want to do that and we've ended up not only with your office but we have hired a private attorney out in town to sit mm -hmm. to just make sure that we don't violate anybody's property those rights. those people watching from surrounding counties uh, have your county take a look at it we learn stuff from other counties that's something we're proud oh, of yeah, here. Sure, Come take a look at our program because uh, I know there's some co-camp towns which are beautiful, but it goes without fail that there's always uh, one or two of the old houses that need to be, just can't be safe. You want to see those co-camp houses see, that, saved. That program one Every now and then there's one, if everybody knows what I'm talking about, there's always oh, yeah. one on the street that needs to be pulled out. It just, sure. it and that, just, it just, well, it's kept up people out, out migrated for years, going to Michigan mm -hmm. and Ohio to work. Now they go, of course, to North Carolina and Tennessee, most of our people. I don't people. know what but, you put back in that spot, but, but whatever you put back has to be better than a, than a building. Than a blighted house, oh, and a, a dilapidated house. And that, a, that program won a national award as well. It won a national award, the program did win one. But we couldn't have won that award. It hadn't been without we all the together. help of your office. Well, I appreciate it, your we, office. we try to keep a low profile and just do the legal work. Uh, when you're in an elected office, you want to get out. For instinct is, is to jump out and start hollering all the great things you can do. Sometimes you got to tone it back a little bit when you're the attorney because you're not the one doing the. Uh, we like to think that we're involved in a lot of great things, and I appreciate you bringing us out and uh, letting us get some of the credit for some of the great things that are going on in this county. That's great. I appreciate it. Well, it looks like the judge said. He's be excited. People, a lot of people may not be aware of all the all the uh, things the county attorney's office actually does. In this I've been county. working for the government off and on for for thirty. Years started working with the federal government back in '80, and I'm not 50 years old. Oh, I turned 50 this year. It's going to be a great year. I'm not going to tell you what day because I don't want any of that skeletons and all that stuff on my doors down here. And, but it's great. I've been here 50 years, and I told somebody, I told Sheriff because he he was sheriff when I was born. I'm 50, and I'm the kid around here. So it kind of I've got 30 years. I found the kid around. <laughs> I remember Judge Ruther when I was a kid. He lived next door to my grandparents. And I remember them talking about a kid that loves politics. They said, there's a kid next door, he's going to run for office, and he loves politics. And I was thinking, my age, because I was like seven or eight, they was talking about a kid being a 
<laughs> probably what, 25, 30 year yeah. old. And I got into my first race when I was 29. That was for a district judge's office. And uh, the only good part about starting young is you get middle aged, you feel like you're experienced. So uh, I guess I'm 50s middle aged, but I don't see many 100 year old men running around. But anyway, I've looked forward to the next 30 years. Uh, I want to be involved in some capacity. It may not be here. Uh, judge, I know when uh, you were out of office, you stayed active. Uh, it's uh, easy in politics to get a bitter pill every now and then, uh, win or lose. And I know Judge Rutherford stayed right with it and uh, kept working with this county, kept giving us advice, kept coming around, and uh, worked with the, uh, and uh, I don't guess Paul Patton has a bigger fan than uh, Wayne Rutherford. And uh, right. constantly, and uh, I, I, I've learned a lot from working with people like uh, Wayne and Bill Deskins and all the people that's come down the pike. Uh, they're competitive. They're competitive at getting these positions. They've never used these positions to uh, further any personal agenda. And uh, I guarantee most of them it's cost them personally. Uh, when you're in public office, you spend a lot of energy. And um, that's the reason I'm so glad to see the TV. You're getting to, people are getting to see a little bit of behind the scenes and getting to know us a little bit. And uh, when this is all said and done, you want to think that the people had a part of it. They're paying for this. So <laughs> I, I like seeing the people. Sure. This one place that they got an eye into the buildings now. I, uh, we're right in the base. We're right, we're right in the courthouse here. We're right in the gut bowels of the building, and, the, uh, your and, office the, and also, so is the uh, so is the people here watching. Your office also collection of taxes. Oh my goodness, yeah, yeah. And you got to have revenue to run the government. And taxes, <laughs> private companies we can't avoid it. Uh, it's sad what's happened to this. No one company, ever came in and bought taxes before. They always could. Now, sometimes somebody would buy neighbors because, sure. they, one, they saw it as a good investment because 12% legal interest used to be great. Uh, but people found out, and even corporations found out, it wasn't profitable because there were so many limitations your government put on it. And it, it's good when these companies come in buy a piece of property that 20 people own. It's been abandoned. Uh, some of these properties have been abandoned. Um, and it, but it's terrible when it's a homeowner and a family and they're trying to struggle, they're trying to make ends meet, and they've gotten behind on their taxes. Come to my office, 437-3858. That is a number that calls straight into glory. If you get behind on your taxes, by the way, the end of this month, if you've not paid last year's taxes, you're Correct. getting ready for a 20% penalty. That means 240% annual rate kick in for one month. Now let's, re let's repeat that again. Repeat 20%, that one more 20, time. So if you don't people. pay your taxes by the end of the month, you've got a 20% penalty. I learned that. You know how I found that out? You think it by reading this? I looked at my card that Fuzzy sent me. Yeah. I stopped and said, I believe I'll read this thing. <laughs> they mail it to you. I'm starting to, we, get in a bit, we get busy. We get so busy we don't read our mail. And that letter the sheriff sends you puts it out in pretty great detail. I hate to say it, attorneys don't read their stuff. Uh, people that are charged with knowledge, it's hard to put, say you're ignorant of the law when you've when you, when you got a license to, to study law. But uh, that reminds me of something I was going to tell you. Judge Ruth, for, when you was talking about all the federal flood money coming in, I'm always wanting to tell something that's funny, I guess, because it, it breaks the monotony sometimes up of, a, of our profession. But he had this document there, and they had these millions of dollars of checks for flood relief. And Judge Ruth looked at me, and I was a little bit of a hurry. And this document was massive. It's about the size of that book. And said, I need to know what we need to do. I said to that guy that was standing there from the federal government, I said, if we change one word in there, do we get that money? He said, no. I said, I suggest we sign it. <laughs> well, Judge Ruther wasn't wanting me to tell him whether or not to sign it. He was wanting to let us know what our responsibilities, <laughs> what our duties would be in the future. He was wanting a little more than just a yes or no. I know he's going to sign it. It's just like when you've got a bank mortgage, they got 100 pages there, and you're wanting in that well, house, and your wife's house. already moving in. You're going to sign <laughs> it. You're going to sign that. No, yeah, you, you don't get that. You're not going to get the money if you don't sign it. So uh, I thought that further. I said, if we change one word, do we get the money? No. <laughs> sign it. And I we'll, know. Worry about, we'll worry about what it says later. What about civil cases? How many civil cases do you think you do? Now, civil is anything that's not putting you in jail. So that's guardianships. We do probably 150, 200 of those. You're talking about representing the county on yeah. civil. Yeah. Civil yeah. cases, we defend them. Okay. Every time the bank forecloses on your property, Correct. a lot of people think I'm doing it because they turn to the page and look for some name they recognize. They'll see some company out of Louisville, one of the bigger law firms in Pikeville, files the suit. For some reason, they don't see that. They see Harold Keith Hall, Pike County Attorney down here. 
they serve us notice of any foreclosure because they list us as a defendant because taxes. Taxes. They want to make sure when the case is settled, any claim we have for taxes, we move in. And Roland does probably five of those a week sometimes. Mm. Our office do five to ten. We join in on all those. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and say we do a lot of work on those because we just simply say, hey, here's what the taxes are. Here's what's owed. Sure. The bank or whoever, whoever the bank, the banks usually make sure that all the taxes, they do the search and make sure that it's all paid up. So those are civil cases. We do also guardianships. Those are considered civil. Uh, we do probably 150, 200 of those a year. And then we do the, uh, uh, sometimes we do children, the, the children cases are considered civil. The uh, dependency, neglect, and abuse, we're removing, we're not locking anybody up, but we're trying to decide where the children are going. And then child support cases, we have probably uh, uh, paternities. Sure. We do the paternity case. You know, we can do, a lot of people think that's real scientific. We do a DNA test now because we do them in volume for less than $100. We find out who the father is. And uh, believe it or not, the men like it as well. A lot, lot of men, a lot of think, people think that's punishment on the man. It's not. A lot of times the man, if there's an issue whether or not he's the father, he obviously... Wants to know. Well, that, that, they don't want it thrown up to them when the child's 10. And they updated the that statute. That's KRS 406 uh, One, 021. Uh -huh. They updated that statute uh, to the point that you were discussing mm -hmm. uh, so on the DEA part. Uh, so, and gosh, back when I had the court system. You jury tried them. They'd bring pictures in. <laughs> don't this child look, look like, like this one or that one? If the blood test, I call, still call it blood test because we used to tie the children down in the office and stick a needle in them. Now they swab your mouth and they can tell if you're yeah. the dad. Uh, but it's 90, if the, if the DNA test comes back 99.99%, 99% or higher that you're the father, which they always either come back 99.99 or zero, then there's no jury trial. Entertainment license. Another one your office handles it. My get a few of those. My get a few of those, don't still involved You in decide whether or not people come. We have the hearings, and the, your office determines. Mm -hmm. uh, and the sheriff investigates, reports back to the county attorney, and the county attorney recommends to the county judge executive where to issue the entertainment permit or not. We have a few inter places of entertainment in the county, sure do. So your, your duties are varied, and wow, uh, you are a busy fellow. Yeah, we're your at, office, your staff, and, and you are. And I try to be an administrator, and, and it's, it's tempting to want to be hands-on and do things hands-on, but it's, uh, I have to let go and trust my people. So if you come in and one of my people's doing something, wait and see if, but before you let me mess it up, let them mess it up first, then see if I can mess it up some more. But no, I'm joking. We, we'll try to make sure that uh, I, I, I see the court system as making things better. We don't make things perfect. Um, but things that do go through the district court system. And again, the district court is Judge Mullins and Judge Friend. District court started around 1978, Judge. 1978. And that's when the judiciary, it, for the, some of the older people, they still go to their magistrate or the county judge with traffic violations. And that's because they did that 30 years ago. Yeah, sure. And their, their papa told them to go see the judge. They come to see Judge Rutherford. Well, I could write a book, uh, and you could too, of the excuses you've heard even on moving hazardous violations, a citation of why they got a citation. No one's ever I ran a red light. All. No one has ever just said, I ran that red light and I got caught. <laughs> I'd like to see us have those videos like they have. I got a ticket in Tennessee about two years ago, one of those that snaps you. And all I did was roll to yield. I promise I wasn't guilty, even though the video says I was. Uh, so speaking of the Internet, they mailed me a thing said, get on the Internet and watch yourself run a red light. I pulled up to a light and rolled it. I rolled to the right. I'm still not guilty, but I paid it. Uh, they put a little thing on it that says it's not going to go on your record. But I played guilty and sent $50 down there because they said if you come down and lose, it's 200 So I didn't want to go down. But uh, I'd like to see us have those at major intersections. Nothing else, just find out the truth after an accident. Uh, or if somebody did run them, say, hey, quit doing that. Uh, if once you find out you're caught at something, you're going to quit doing it probably, even if it's something that... Uh, even if you don't get fined or punished severely, usually when people are found out at something, they'll they'll good people, and, and that's what people people want to do the right thing. Once they see that, I would rather have them see it, acknowledge it, and not be fined anything, and stand there and still get in their mind that they didn't do it. Um, because that's what we're all trying to do with these laws. Is these minor laws that I deal with are people just trying to learn how to behave, and they're trying to get our family. We don't want our families out get doing anything reckless. And, and again, we don't want to do anything reckless ourselves. 
So back people doing I, 75 miles an hour think they're safe. Mr. County Attorney, they're back dangerous. when I had the, when I was the judge of the court system, we had a lot of prostitution in the county, and the county attorney's office was very busy. I don't hear of that much as it was back in the 70s when I had the court system. But uh, you all had that responsibility, and it was uh, very active back then. I don't see any. That was under I've not heard KRS them come through 233 in a while. That has responsibilities. But, but, uh, but gosh, you all have heard of many, many duties that the county attorney and his office has, and uh, the county judge executive and operating the county, and the magistrates in this county, Brandon, and, yes. and our staff. We could not uh, do anything, move this county, and and be the progressive county that we are uh, on that. And and also, uh, as I said, uh, people sometimes worry about, talk about grand juries that sets the, uh, of, of how you live in, in your communities and so forth. It's, it's also who you have in the county attorney's office and how dedicated they are to see if we have safe streets and the, we, we have a real responsibility to make people safe uh, in their homes and safe in their community, safe in their churches. And, uh, and we, we're blessed to, to have a Commonwealth attorney and county attorney on, on the prosecuting side that certainly takes a strong stand. And, and uh, this fight against the scourge of drugs, your, your oh, office oh. has been continuously involved in that. Uh, we filed suit against Purdue Farmer. We could not. Oh yeah, we did. We, we could not do that without the input of the county attorney's office. Uh, that case, after nearly five years, is coming back from New York to Pike Circuit Court, and the uh, the attorney general said, with the help of the local county attorney, that he's going to prosecute that case himself. And uh, scourge of drugs has been offered during our term that in the last. Uh, your last two terms and, and my term and the term I'm into now. The scourge of drugs, we have lost, uh, uh, every family has been touched with this prescription drug, an Oxycontin. And uh, the Purdue Farmer came in and convinced our doctors that they had a drug, who, that drug that was not addictive, and uh, that it was the greatest thing in the history of man for pain. And look what it brought upon the, the sadness it brought upon the family. Good people, good church-going people, uh, got addicted to it, and uh, and uh, your office has certainly been a played a part in in the prosecuting and and in in the civil case that we brought. If we are fortunate in the civil case, then we will, of course we want to spend that money on on more facilities. You have also been involved in the programs they have at the jail, the SAP program. Right. You have 183 men and about 50, 80 some women 80 in some that women. program. Yeah, that, that number is more. Uh, we, uh, we, we, of course, we have West Care up on the, for the men. Uh, your office has assisted us in regard to providing uh, seed money to get the old lookout school for the women's facility in the future. And if the economy hadn't went down the drain the last two or three years, that facility would already have been operating. But in the future, it will be operating. So, so I, I want to commend you for the stand that you've taken against this scourge of drugs that we have that, we that's we almost have a, killed off a generation of our young people in this county. That's a whole other show, isn't it? Oh, my goodness. Too. Yeah, it's a, it's a program in itself. We've got to find a way to make people happy uh, without doing the drugs. I. I, I keep thinking I know some answers, and I might know the answer for Bob here, but that same answer don't work for Jane uh, or to Bill. They're just like different type of alcoholics. Some are binge drinkers, some are functional, some of this. But drugs, you got not only have have uh, some of the issues you have with alcoholism, but it's faster, more dangerous. And there's so many varieties. You mix the person with the type of drug. I've never seen two of the cases the same. I do know when somebody's totally down and out on drugs, we can lock them up over in the jail, use up one of our spaces for, that should be there for criminals, for people that are mean, people that want to hurt me or you, or we can just turn them loose out here and let them die, and just let them bounce around, do the best they can. 
or three, we can try to find facilities and treatment and do what I think God would want us to do and do everything we can and try to help them. I'm, glad now, I'm not talking about your drug dealers or your criminals. I'm glad you mentioned that word God because when we looked at the statistics in regard to people who've been rehabilitated from drugs, until, until they brought the spiritual side into their counseling, with a, it started in North Carolina when they finally did a study on a, on a uh, nonprofit, and it showed Westcare has directly and indirectly adopted the spirit counseling now, and and, and it it has made a difference, and it, the recidivism of going back, it, it has kept them out, it has given them hope, and it is a, it's. A, a, yeah, I'm not a preacher. Uh, like some of these guys try to do, but I'm a witness. That's all I can tell you what I've seen. Uh, I've seen, uh, uh, and, and, you know, the religion here is Christianity in our community. You know, there's some other religions, but Christianity is our religion here. And I've seen Christ change these people right. that I can't do nothing amazing. with. You can't do the nothing court with. system can't do nothing with. And I'm just a witness, okay? I'm not promoting any particular religion. I'm not allowed to do that on government TV or on government. I'm just a witness to what I've seen and observed. That's it. Just a witness. Just a mere witness. So take it for what it's worth. If you don't believe me, Come tell me what to do. <laughs> I'm looking for any answers. If you've got some answers that I don't well, have on the drug problem, come tell me because I'm just a witness. Well, I'll before, just tell you what I've seen, work, and observed. And, and the churches here have, have done some miracles. I've seen miracles. I've seen people change that I, I can't explain it. Oh, we have to. Well, yeah. before we wrap up here, Mr. County Attorney, won't you give the best num phone number for people to call to reach your office? Sure. Taxes. That's a big issue this month. My goodness. Uh, if you miss the end of this month, go to your banker. Tell them, say, look. You, you you know if you're if you own a home and you don't owe in, you don't owe the bank anything, go borrow some and pay it. It's tax deductible interest. I'm not promoting banking, but it's better than paying the tax man. And that's is that uh, the three eight five eight number four three seven three eight five eight. Another thing is if you do owe the bank, the bank don't want you getting in any deeper. Go talk to them. Go talk to them. And say look, you've got a mortgage on this home. Because if you get in trouble, the bank loses too because those taxes come out ahead of the bank's money. Some of them even want you to put an escrow account. That's not a bad idea. If you owe the bank, some banks don't like escrow accounts. They're fun. They're good though. You, you, in the, the year you get your tax bill and you just say, I, I'll call the sheriff make sure they paid it. Uh, I used to do my escrow and I didn't. And I've got a tax bill i got to pay. So it, it shocks you when you get a tax bill and you don't, if you're already in your mortgage, it makes life a little easier. Uh, it's just like a Christmas club account or something. So take it, take it, take a way, find a way to cover those taxes. I talked to somebody the other day and uh, tax season has filed suit on them just for a couple of years, but they owe us about seven or eight. And I looked up and down the list, they're going to have to uh, file bankruptcy to get rid of some of their debts, and they're probably going to have to sell their home to pay the taxes. Bad we've been, situation. Okay, attorney, we've been very understanding of people's situation, and we have been able to help them mm -hmm. and set up. Uh, we set payments up, and then if you set up payments, up tax fees has to abide by that. They can't come in, take, they can't take the ones I've got agreements on. But now, if you work, get an agreement that's if, realistic. But if you wait, Mm -hmm. And get beyond that cutoff date, then you've right. got a problem. Those cutoff dates are up buy, in the summer. If they buy, if they nothing bad is going, nothing, nothing quick is going to happen if you don't pay by the end of this month. The nightmare is going to happen later, August one or September one, when taxis, they they sell the tax tickets up here in town. Used to nobody showed. Now there's actually a date where there's people there to buy you tax tickets. Uh, used to they just had a sale and said they did and nothing happened, but now that it's profitable and lucrative for people to buy your tax it's ticket. One group out of Houston, Texas, a mm -hmm. millionaire, the other and group's in New York. Uh, there's a guy, matter, there's matter an attorney fact, in New Pearl told me about two and a half months ago, she had three groups, three different ones from around the country in her office taking a look at the tax room. Garbage bills. Pay your garbage, garbage bills. bills. i tell you what, pay your garbage bills. You probably, if you call down here, they're going to tell you that you owe about if you if you got behind on your garbage bill, you call down. They're going to tell you all about a million dollars. The truth is, the interest and penalties have compounded so much. Call down, negotiate with Roland or me. We'll get yes. you down to almost Six. down to face value. We just want you back paying for your garbage and catching up. We want you back in good standing with us. Uh, so get call us. Uh, Roland's four three two eight one seven five. Now that's on the garbage. Uh, or call Solid Waste. And sure, I don't know the number. Six two four five four three two. Call our office. Uh, mm -hmm. We get most of those. We do. Calls. We get a lot of. Everybody calls. has we garbage get, bill, don't they? We get a lot of calls for garbage. We do everybody at Coal Run and Pikeville, right? We serve thirty three thousand homes and businesses. Now imagine that in a county, the largest county in land area, in a mountainous area, 
Uh, and those guys are good. I know we miss Lyons does a, they are. During the holidays, my garbage pickup's on Monday. So I was going to lose two Mondays in a row, but you all fixed that so that they had a skeleton crew out picking up garbage on uh, that Monday. Right. They didn't take off two Mondays in a row, and they voluntarily agreed to do that because they didn't want to. Yeah, they took off a Thursday prior. One of the guys hollered at me on his garbage run. He said, Keith, I walked onto your property the other day because I didn't know they were picking them up. And he was asking me if that was okay because I had not sent my garbage to the curve because they came unexpectedly catching up on their route. Sure. And he was apologizing that he had walked over to my garage to get my garbage. And I thought that was respectful. Uh, sure. He didn't have to ask me that. I mean, everybody knows you walk over and get their garbage. But uh, these guys that pick up that garbage when it's 20 below or 120, uh, uh, we got good good crew out there. They're good people. And uh, somebody people get mad because they leave a piece of paper down the bottom. That's your job, put them in them bags. My goodness, they're going to stop up every week. It, you know, spray out your cans. Pick up 33,000 homes and businesses. You got to have it. They don't have time to sit there and, and clean up your whole yard. Uh, well, I realize what that. What about just the... the the general number to call the county attorney's office. Oh yeah, four three two six two five zero. That's the general. That's the main office. Child support is four three three one eight two two. Mr. County Attorney, we have. And I'm in the book under Howard Hall and Holly. Sure. We have twelve uh, twelve hundred miles of roads in this county. Wow. Pike County maintains uh, eight hundred of those. If it's not for your office and the advice that you give the the uh, road commissioners and the magistrates and my office, uh, we could not. Uh, and one thing that I will say, you can't run for office in Pike County anymore and promise blacktop. 97 or 98 percent of the roads are blacktop in Pike now. County. So you can't run for office again promising blacktop like uh, years ago they used to do, uh, uh, able to do. But I remember when Cal Penn just had one mile of blacktop when sure. I was growing up. I remember the, the, uh, a lot of the roads around here were... Sure. Uh, I remember all the, and you didn't have as many car washes either. Uh, and I remember all the cars had brown on them. They were all, all the cars looked brown. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's a great opportunity in Pike TV, uh, the, this program. And we wanted to, we wanted you as a guest on this, this, this station and to let the people know uh, how dedicated you are and, and what you mean to every county official in this county great. that holds a county office. And, uh, even Lonnie Osborne, the, uh, the advice that your office gives them, uh, he is a quasi, I wow. guess. Yeah, they've got a lot of... PBA, of... they have a lot. And call on your office for a lot of, a lot of advice, too. And you well, do have, under the under statute that was passed, responsibilities, to, as you said earlier. You are federal, state, and county, that you have many varied responsibilities. If it's a holiday, remember, we, we, we take all those holidays. We respect them all. I told my office, I said, you all want to take federal holidays, you want to take state, you want to take county. For some reason, they just think they should respect all three. Well, Mr. Hall, holidays. thank you for joining <laughs> us today. And on great. I appreciate the, the Pike TV. That's a great production. Well, on behalf of yourself and Judge Rutherford, uh, I'm Brandon Roberts. Thanks for watching the Pike County Report.